and it's especially a pleasure to welcome such an interesting panel. And I'm just going to mention the panel members in, in turn, then we'll, we'll kick off. We're going to hear first from uh, Marie Garder, who's Global Deputy Director for the International Initiative for Impact Evaluation, um, an organization which, if you do not know, uh, is really worth getting to know, particularly worth trawling through their website, because they have a lot of really interesting things. Marie's going to um, discuss evidence, evidence links in the causal chain. We're then going to go to Daniel Gilligan, Senior Research Fellow for Poverty, Health, and Nutrition Division in IFPRI, who's going to talk about Harvest Plus, the very interesting orange flesh sweet potato initiatives. Um, then to <coughs> Laura Iannotti, Assistant Professor in the Institute of Public Health at Washington University in St. Louis, United States, who's going to talk about uh, the treadle pumps in Africa. Um, terrific initiative, which we're going to want to hear about. And then Derek uh, Byerly, who's going to talk about extending agricultural research, extending evaluations to include nutrition and health outcomes. Um, Derek is chair of the Standing Panel on Impact Assessment for the ISPC. Um, and last, we're going to round up with uh, Kyoko Munyao, who's team leader for Integrated Technical Services at World Vision in Canada, who's going to talk about getting some of this evaluation learning into practice. So that's the agenda. I'm just going to kick off with a, well, actually, no, a procedural point, which is speakers have a strict instruction to stick to time. I'm going to make this sound at nine minutes, and again at 10 minutes, and again at 11 minutes. So I hope that doesn't distract too much from your concentration. Um, a few comments from me in advance. First point is that the development industry, if I can call it that, is going through a bit of a revolution at the moment in terms of becoming much more evidence-based. Um, all kinds of reasons why this is happening, but the speaking as a donor, um, there are, under my patch, I'm responsible for sort of on the order of five and a half billion uh, dollars a year of spend expenditure. Um, I have a huge appetite for evidence to inform what kinds of spending decisions we're going to take. Um, and this appetite is growing across the donor community for a reason, because we need to know what works. Um, and far too often in the past, we haven't known what's, what's worked. Let's give you an example. DFID supported in the state of Andhra Pradesh in this country, a terrific program on rural livelihoods, supporting income uh, generation in rural livelihoods. Really have strong um, sense that this made a big impact. We saw that roughly one million people came out of poverty during the course of the program, but we didn't have a counterfactual to compare it with. So we don't actually know for certain how much, prog how much progress was due to our program and how much was due to the general economic improvement in Andhra Pradesh. It's one of one of many examples where we need better evidence to know what impact we're making. Evaluation has two critical functions. One is about accountability, holding us to account for what we're delivering, but secondly, and perhaps more importantly, learning, creating feedback loops to modify programs as they're in progress, to contribute to the global public good of global knowledge, to contribute to identifying what works and what doesn't work. For all of us, that means an agenda of integrating research and programming much more closely than we have in the past, being much more research canny when doing programming, and also being more program canny when doing research. We have in the subjects of this, this conference, we have a real challenge in that there are two knowledge communities. The agriculture community and the health slash nutrition community tend to use different methods for assessing impacts. They tend to have different vocabularies of evidence. They tend to speak in different ways, attend different conferences. Um, and one of the challenges for us is finding a way to build a common epistemic community so that we can talk to each other and understand in a common basis uh, how things work across the entire chain. So in that spirit, we want to see much more integration. It will be absolutely essential in that process that we use more and better quantified techniques, including control groups, including randomization where, where we can, but not go too far in that direction, to not forget the huge importance of regression analysis, the importance of anthropological techniques, lots of good ethnography, lots of good qualitative analysis, building that in and not forgetting it. Um, so I think you know, there's a challenge to address all of those things. Without further ado, I'm going to turn to the panel and uh, ask Marie, who has a PowerPoint presentation, to kick us off. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> 